Hi, everybody. Hi, it's Ryan Chernock from CDH, and I have another Five Minute Friday for you guys. So, quick question for you. What do you call a fake noodle? An impasta. All right, so classic dad joke right there for you. But that's one of the major kind of problems we have is anything you have with lots of groups or Microsoft Teams is that users can have a problem understanding, well, which group or which team is the right one? Do I need to join or be a part of? And so what we're looking at here is the kind of a whole series dealing with Microsoft Teams governance. And one of the major issues that face people is that if you have if you set up what's called self-service where people can just create any kind of group that are out there, then a lot of groups can be created with very, very similar names. So Q HR, human resources, H resources, human resources, the real human resources. You have all of these groups that say human resources, but which one is really the official one or the one that I need to jo join? So one of the things that you can be done is you can set up as an administration is that you guys can add in what's called a group naming convention, okay? And it really is dealing with that problem to help users understand what is the right group. Because maybe we don't want to turn off self-service because that's pretty, it's pretty severe, but we still want to enable people to, to create groups and teams on an unneeded basis just so we can, we're not stifling collaboration, but we still want to be able to have a way of kind of be able to tell them apart if we look at their names. So Microsoft gives a whole series of PowerShell commands that you can run for your settings for your groups and teams. The way it works is, is you can have a prefix, the group name, and then you have the suffix, okay? So think of it like, um, I don't know, prefix would be the, you know, here's a good example. So the prefix we put in here was just GRP, Okay, then you have like a group name, and then for the suffix can be a static value like GRP, or it can actually be an attribute from the user's profile, so you can actually feed in their particular department. So every group that you create then would have your department name in it, so kind of giving this like kind of auto categorization based on the name. So let's look at the example I have below here. So Jim is in the department retail. Jim creates a group called Team 4. Well, the result is his group name would be GRP team for retail. So cool. Now I set this up already. I've gone through the PowerShell commands to kind of do this. So let me show you just the group naming can how it works and so you can see it in action. Okay. So here I'm logged in with by username Adele and her department is, is the retail department. Okay. So you can see over here we have we have a group that I already tested it out. So there's the naming convention GRP underscore group name and then the name of her department so that's the how it works remember groups and teams they're really the same object just groups get used through the outlook interface and teams through the teams interface so i'm going to go through a little plus sign here create a new group okay so let's give it a name of team five team five and you'll notice right away that the naming convention kicks in and it tells me right away hey this buddy this you're not going to get just team five it's going to be GRP, Team 5, Retail, and it gives me that indication. And notice that's also what happens for the email. So remember, that's unique, and users can't change. We can't change that after the fact. So it says the screaming name is based on a naming policy set by your organization. So pretty cool. I like that a lot. So we'll say we'll make this public. We'll say create. And I'm going to add in a friend of hers, Megan. So that's really kind of the idea behind this. So as users create these groups, it's going to automatically put some prefix and naming around them to give them a little more, you know, unique kind of context and name so people can discover one group from the another. So when you say, Ryan, what do you mean by discover? Because uh, that's kind of maybe a little far-fetched of an idea too. Because if can I just be added to the groups automatically by another user? Sure. In most of the case, I think that's the case. Like if you have a department team, let's say a user is probably going to be, might be a part of like five main groups or teams. Okay. They, they might just add them in. Okay. But you'll notice though, there's also this option here under groups. You have an option here for discovery. And it's going to show you the existing groups that are out here. And here is the kind of the, the use case I really want to bring up is I have a group here called Team 3, and then GRD, GRP, Team 3 Retail. So I just know I'm looking for a group named Team 3, 
So this is where I can get an opportunity to kind of see, well, which one am I really dealing with? That's really, this is the scenario. So I can choose the right group and in a discovery kind of model, kind of looking around for these, oh, that's the right one I need to join. The GRP group, team three, oh, it's the retail one. Oh, that's the one I need to get to. That's the one that Adele made. So, cause I know she's from retail. So that's kind of the, the underlying story behind it. And you can see this is working inside groups, but if I switch over to a browser, this is, I've just changed users. So I'm now logged in as Megan here. And if I go over to teams, so here I can create a new team. Let me just go through the interface here. I go to teams, I can say, hey, let's create a new team, but I can use it from an existing Office 365 group. And here I can see I got those two entries. So it's not just always in a discovery through Outlook, but also through the teams interface, this will kick in too. Now, one of the side notes here, I'll throw at you guys is because Megan here is an administrator, and watch what happens when Megan creates a, a new team. Okay, and I could be, let's just go, we can go do a group too. So that way you guys can get a comparison. Let's try team six. You notice with Megan though, the naming convention is excluded. And you're probably guessing, well, why, Ryan, why is that? Well, it's because she's a system or an Office 365 administrator. So there's a group of people that can override that so that they can they can create a whole series of groups and teams that exclude themselves from the naming convention. So basically we can have kind of a division of the sheep and the goats here where we have teams and groups that are created by the populace, the major pop, you know, major population of your organization, but then you can have different groups that don't have the naming convention. And the fact that they don't have a naming convention, maybe that's the visual cue to let you know, oh, that is the official one. Right. So this represents an actual department because it says human resources and anyone that's created by a user will have that naming convention on it. So that's kind of the, some of the theories or ideas I've been playing around with and implementing with some of our different customers. And so this is one way you guys can control the problem of um, get a little more governance around your Microsoft Teams environments and groups. And so and really solve that problem of hey, um, which group is the real one? How do I find the imposter here? Which is the real item there? And so Microsoft has some great guidelines for this. You guys can go to docs.microsoft.com and there's just groups naming policy. And if you just look up and do a quick Google search for within Google for Teams naming policy, you'll have it. So with that, guys, I'm going to sign off for now. This is uh, Ryan Charnock with CDH, another five-minute Friday. If you want to find some more tips, follow me on Twitter. I'm Ryan Charnock 9 and you can also I'd love to connect with you on LinkedIn. So talk to you later. Thanks a lot. Have a good afternoon.